Well, we're delighted to welcome back Dr. Lisa Marie Griffith. And this week she's talking to us about another, well, I was going to say great Dublin institution, but certainly mm. a very important uh, building uh, place in Irish history, and that's Kilmainham Jail. Uh, Lisa, you can't really have a history of Ireland in the period 1798 to 1916 without talking about Kilmainham Jail. Oh no, absolutely, it would be impossible. Um, Kilmainham Jail is really pivotal um, to the history of Dublin and to the history of nationalist movements in Ireland during this period. Um, I think it tells us a huge amount about you know, the poverty of the city, the crime in the city, um, and it's a really interesting who's who of um, the Irish nationalist movement. Um, so as you say there, you mentioned crime and poverty, because it wasn't just for political prisoners, and we maybe think of it more in terms of, of, of them. Uh, there were a lot of uh, ordinary people who were uh, held in Kilmainham, and, and it also then provides a nice social history of, of Ireland in this period. Absolutely, Kilmainham tells us a huge amount about um, the ordinary Dubliner who would have been imprisoned um, there over the course of its history. Um, the main reason that people actually would have been imprisoned in Kilmainham Jail is for theft. Theft is far and away um, the greatest um, crime that's occurring in Dublin. Um, Dublin was an incredibly poor city, particularly in the 19th century. Um, the fact of the matter is there just weren't enough jobs to go around and there was an expanding population in the city. Um, Dublin didn't have great industries and the industries that it did have um, revolved around brewing um, and there was a lot of associated industries. Um, and there's a lot of very heartbreaking stories um, from the jail itself. One of the other reasons that people would have been imprisoned in Kilmainham jail was for debt. Um, and of course we forget in the 21st century that people can be imprisoned um, for debt. Um, so some of the very sad stories that have come down to us are about people who get incarcerated in the jail for very small amounts of money um, and because they can't afford to pay that back they end up dying in the jail. Um, one of the other things we forget about are that children would have been imprisoned in the jail um, until uh, the second half of the 19th century. Um, and one of the saddest stories that I've come across um, is of an eight-year-old who's imprisoned in Kilmainham Jail and is sentenced to six months hard labour for stealing a cloak. And I think that gives some idea of the poverty in this city because when you hear of someone stealing a cloak, it kind of conjures up image that, images that they're perhaps doing it for warmth. God, and I'd say during the famine years then, uh, things must have been even worse then. Well, during the famine, um, the jail itself is actually overrun with prisoners. Um, there were 200 cells in Kilmainham, and uh, we know that by 1850, there are about 9,000 people being kept within the jail. So originally when the prison was open, um, the prison governors wanted to tackle overcrowding in prison and they had the idea that there would be one person to a cell. We know that during the famine there were five people kept in each cell and a large number of people kept in the hallways. There's anecdotal evidence to suggest that some people were even stealing um, to get into the jail because if you're in a jail you're being offered food and you're being offered a bed. This was something that certainly the jail governors were very worried about and in an attempt to try and stop people from stealing in order to get into prison they halved all of the food rations. Now if you can imagine prisoners don't normally get fed that well anyway, so to have the rations means that there were people starving inside the jail. The fact of the matter is though, most people who ended up in Kilmainham jail during the famine did so um, because in Ireland uh, you, it was illegal to be a vagrant and what that means is it was illegal to be a homeless person. There was a huge number of people who were being evicted from their homes um, because they couldn't pay their rents and this lent, led to them becoming vagrants, trying to get to Dublin in an attempt to get a job and being arrested along the way and being put in prison. God, okay, so the horrors of, of poverty in, in, in Dublin at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Back to the political prisoners though, because it's probably more closely associated with uh, these prisoners in 1798, 1803, Emmett was there, all the way up to 1916. Uh, uh, some of the, the key figures in the revolutionary struggle ended up in Kilmainham. Absolutely. Kilmainham Jail is opened um, in 1796 as the city jail and immediately it begins to take in um, political prisoners. And the very first is Henry Joy McCracken, who's one of the founding members of the United Irishmen. The movement itself um, had been made illegal and the leaders had gone underground and had become a secret society. So he was imprisoned for his membership of the United Irishmen. Of course, a lot of United Irishmen after the 1798 rebellion also end up um, in the jail. Thomas Addis Emmett was imprisoned there after the rebellion. He's the older brother of Robert Emmett and a huge inspiration um, to Robert, Robert Emmett. We have some really interesting stories about Robert Emmett in the jail um, as well. Um, there are only a very small number of leaders who weren't imprisoned in Kilmainham jail. It's almost easier to list them. Um, Wolftone wasn't kept in the prison, um, O'Connell wasn't kept in the prison and Michael Collins wasn't. But after that, pretty much everyone else. Um, the Young Irelanders um, were also imprisoned there. In fact, one of the very first, first photographs that's taken in Ireland is taken in the prison yards of um, three of the Young Irelanders, uh, Thomas Francis Marr, William Smith O'Brien and Patrick O'Donoghue um, and they are positioned alongside one of the prison guards. Um, when the photo got out it was incredibly uh, popular and supporters of the Young Irelanders really wanted the image. It became so popular that it was restaged with actors standing in uh, for the real rebels. Um, and it was sold as a money making, as a money making photo. Brilliant! <laughs> uh, it shows the power of celebrity even even then. Uh, Charles Stuart Parnell uh, was also a prisoner there, but uh, w given that he was, you know, a fairly well off figure and also a, a member of Parliament, would he have been treated differently? Yes, he, we know that he was treated differently in the prison. Um, he actually was given his own private uh, chamber. Um, and when you visit the uh, prison, they have some of the images on display of his rooms, which look fairly comfortable. And that said, how comfortable is a prison? We know that one of his major complaints while he was there um, was the food. Um, food was a huge issue. Initially, when uh, Parnell and his supporters were imprisoned, they were allowed order in food from outside and they used to go to a, a local restaurant and have all of their food um, brought inside. The prison governor is said to have uh, joked to Parnell though that uh, if the government wanted to get rid of the Land League all they would have to do is to imprison them because the food bills from this restaurant were really mounting um, and so Parnell cut off um, all of the supporters from getting their meals from outside and they had to deal with uh, prison food which really wasn't very nice and was a constant source of complaint for him and his supporters. One of the other interesting stories that emerges of Parnell um, being in the prison um, comes from, again, his supporters. A lot of his supporters uh, outside the prison um, sent him gifts and in particular women liked to send him gifts. Um, and of course they sent him some quite personal items from time to time. There's one story of him being sent uh, green stockings uh, from a lady. Um, we know that another lady managed to um, actually send him a, a green, very expensive quilt for his bed to make sure that he was warm. Unfortunately though, Parnell famously didn't like the colour green and so apparently he hid it out of sight so he wouldn't have to look at it. The thing that always strikes me when I visit Kilmainham is the cold. Absolutely. You know, it's mm -hmm. very cold and uh, that must have been uh, terrible for the prisoners as well. It, it was incredibly cold um, and there's something about Kilmainham, if you stand in one spot for, for too long you can feel the cold coming up through your legs and dampness is also a real problem. Um, this is something that we know a lot about from the Civil War, from some of the prisoners who were kept there, um, conditions in the 
prison during the Civil War was incredibly bad. Um, it was primarily a women's prison during the Civil War. Hygiene was a real problem. Um, the women were given a bucket in the corner of the room. Um, there were a lot of really awful smells as a result and they broke the windows in the summer to try and leave the smell out. Um, by the time it got to the winter, the prison governor refused to replace the windows in the cells. And so this made it even more cold and even more uncomfortable. Conditions really that I don't think we could imagine today. I suppose it's most f closely associated with the leaders of the 1916 rising. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think it, it has become a, almost a place of pilgrimage mm -hmm. for so many people who are supporters of the 1916 rising. Uh, how important was it during that time? Well, the leaders of the 1916 Rising um, were brought to Kilmainham Jail the night before their executions and they were executed in the Stonebreakers yard um, of the jail. And it's the stories really that leaked out of these executions um, that assisted in, in changing people's mind about the Rising and in supporting the leaders. There's some real stories of heartbreak and bravery, um, both in uh, the leaders saying goodbye to their family the night before, but also in how they face their executions. One of the stories that I know upset me when I heard about it is of Michael Mallon. Um, Michael Mallon was actually from Kilmainham Jail and he was brought from Richmond Prison to Kilmainham Jail the night before his execution. And on his way there, they passed right past his front door where he lived with his wife and his uh, children. And he wrote a letter to his wife that night describing how he had searched each of the windows in the front door, wishing his wife to come to the window so that he could catch one last glimpse of her. Unfortunately, the only sighting that he made was of the family dog. Um, but it was a real heartbreaking moment for him. And, and there was a marriage then in the jail as well, Joseph Mary Plunkett. There was. Uh, Joseph Plunkett married Grace Gifford, who was um, in her own right um, a radical Republican. Um, one of the really heartbreaking things about this is that the two of them were not left alone after um, the wedding took place. Um, so they weren't allowed any private moments uh, to speak to each other. Um, but the marriage um, meant a huge uh, a great deal to the pair of them and, and they wanted to make sure that they were married before he was executed. And the jail had closed down a few years before that. It was, was it, did they just reopen it just for the, the rising? Yeah, the jail itself was in such poor condition that it had been shut down in 1911, um, which gives us an idea of the conditions that a lot of the people housed in the jail actually faced. Um, one of the wings had been used as a military barracks um, at the beginning of the Great War. Um, but if you can imagine, um, in the aftermath of the 1916 Rising, despite the fact that only 1,600 people took part in the Rising, the British arrested between three and 4,000 people, um, took them off the streets of Dublin, and they need somewhere to uh, imprison them. And so the jail was opened especially for the 1916 Rising. Uh, and of course, Grace Gifford, who married Joseph Plunkett, she ended up in the jail herself then uh, during the Civil War. Yeah, the majority of people who were actually housed in the jail in this period um, were women. She ended up uh, in the jail later on in 1916 and again during the Civil War. Um, Grace Gifford was a cartoonist um, and she painted um, a Madonna on her cell wall during the Civil War. Um, and this picture has been become known as the Kilmainham Madonna and it can be viewed um, when you go and visit the jail. Um, a lot of the women and the prisoners, though, who were held there throughout this period have left their marks on the wall. Um, and the graffiti there is remarkable uh, and is its own rich history in itself. Uh, the hunger strike uh, seems to have been a particularly Irish weapon during this time and again and later in the 20th century. Uh, were there episodes of that uh, in, in Kilmainham Jail? Yeah, during the Civil War, when women are kept in the prison, um, there some people believe that the women are kept in almost too much comfort. They're allowed a lot of letters and they're allowed a lot of parcels that would have included food and books. Um, and these parcels are really lifelines for a lot of these women. Um, and a lot of the women who are involved in um, the Republican movement and on the anti-treaty side are very educated women. And um, we know that there was two doctors imprisoned in there, um, but the parcels were stopped 
by the um, jail uh, governor and in an attempt to object against this, um, a large number of the women go on hunger strike. Now, eventually they are given back um, their right to their parcels and their letters. Three women, however, um, continue to go on hunger strike. They say that they're going to strike until their full freedom is granted. Um, one of them um, gets quite ill, she comes off hunger strike and two of them are granted their full freedom. So after the Civil War then, uh, the jail closes its doors forever as a prison and later it opens as a museum. Uh, it's also been used for a lot of movies uh, and I think music videos. I think you too might have shot one of their videos there as well. Yeah, um, the prison actually crops up in, in lots of uh, films and TV series, but also in some quite iconic films. Um, the original Italian job um, where Michael Caine is in the prison and he's coming down the steps is filmed um, in the East Wing. Um, in the Name of the Father is also filmed um, in Kilmainham Jail. And of course, Michael Collins, quite a, quite a few scenes are, are filmed in Kilmainham Jail. And uh, I suppose, again, it's one of those places in Dublin which uh, uh, is well worth a visit because it really brings the, the history alive uh, where Emmett was a prisoner, where Parnell was a prisoner and then where the, the 1916 leaders spent their last night and, and where they were taken out and shot. Absolutely. I think it's a, a must-see when you come to Dublin to stand in the corridors to appreciate how cold it is, how many people were squashed into these tiny cramped confined spaces during the famine, to get a sense of um, what the 1916 leaders would have experienced. Um, I mean, I, it's we're really lucky to actually still have Kilmainham Jail and that its doors are open and that we can visit it. OK, well, Lisa, you've made us feel as if we were there. You've brought it to life for us. And thank you so much for that. Thanks, Patrick.